What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to look at a Bully Performance amplifier. What's this all about? $65 on Amazon. Let's pick one up, take a closer look. Taking it out of the box in super speed here, you can see some of the accessories and here's the amplifier itself. Looks kind of slick. Comes with the manual that talks about some things about how to hook up your speakers, all that good stuff. And of course on the back, it talks about the power output, 200 watts at 4 ohms. 350 at 2 ohms, 500 at 1 ohm, 230 amp fuses. If you look here on one side, you'll see the line input, line outputs of RCAs. You'll see a gain control, variable subsonic, which is very cool for a budget amplifier, low pass filter. There's also a variable bass boost in addition to a phase shift, which gives you the ability to go from zero to 180 degrees. That's not temperature, friends. That's phase of the speaker. You big dummy. Also, remote connection. Looks like a telephone for your sub bass level. On the opposite side, we have power ground remote via spade style terminals. We have the two 30 amp fuses I've mentioned already. And then we have two speaker outputs, two pluses, two minuses here. But again, this is a monoblock amplifier. And then we comes with a base remote here. Uses a RJ11 style connector so it stays securely in the amp. And here is the adjustment. It's a plastic housing. The potentiometer. It's really hard to turn. I'm not a big fan of this. But hey, it's a $65 amp. What can you say? Also comes with some spare fuses, some screws to mount it, all that good stuff. Now let's talk about dimensions. Approximately 12 inches by 8.15 inches by 1.9 inches and the millimeter equivalents are there as well so let's take off the good old caps here get the amplifier wired up and then we'll fire up the good old amp dyno and see how this amplifier performs at this budget price of 65 dollars now before we get to the test make sure you check out links in the video description pick up some willison audio merch help big d buy his next amp all right, first up, 4 ohms mono amplifiers rated 200 watts by the single channel. Here we go, certified test takes us up to the 1% distortion point. And you can see right at 14.4, a little bit shy, 189. But honestly, that is statistically close enough to give it a pass. Now let's try uncertified, which takes us up to the clipping point. Let's see if we can get that 200 watts and it's climbing it's climbing we can get there uh no 199 though at 14.22 again statistically rated power there so close we're going to give it to it dynamic power here we're going to try 40 hertz pulse tone into the amp see if we can surpass 200 and it appears that we can 201 14.38 volts does the rated power so yay but a good bully. 78% efficient at 4 ohms. Not superb, but it'll do. Next up, 2 ohms mono rated 350 watts times 1. Let's try a certified test. Up to 1% total harmonic distortion. And yeah, not quite there. 320, 14.32 rated 350. Again, the manual does not state whether the rated power is at 1% THD or at clipping. So we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Can it make it in the clipping mode, uncertified mode, 2 ohms, 40 hertz. Here we go. And it's counting, counting, just literally a few watts away. 343, 14.11. Now let's try the dynamic pulse test. Sending a 40 hertz kick drum pulse style into the amplifier. And here we go. What do we got? So close. Oh, it just passed it. 351, 14.38. We measured efficiency at 76.5%. It's okay, not great. Next up, 1 ohm mono rated 500 watts times 1. Certified test up first. Again, so close. 481, 14.48. But since many amplifiers are tested to the point of clipping, and this is a budget amplifier. We're going to let the uncertified mode be the one that we're going to count. 
So here it goes, uncertified test. And yes, we got the 500 watts quite easily. Look at this, 547, 14.09 volts. And then finally for the one ohm test, reset the amp dyno. Let's try the dynamic pulse test, 40 Hertz. And there you go. Easily rated power plus some, 588, 14.25. As far as efficiency goes, 67.2%. Next up, we'll show off the dyno sheet where I pretty much just showed you <laughs> all the tests. But uh, if you want to pause this so you can actually see the numbers, you're welcome to do that. Now, you may notice I've blanked out some of the ones on the right. That's if you stay tuned until after the end of what most people think the end of the video is. I'm going to show you some more. Next up, we're going to find out do it bump though. Let's see. I'll talk a little bit more later about what I think about the sound quality, but for now, let's see what's inside this amplifier. There are only six screws here on the bottom. We'll take the six screws out, and we'll be able to check out the guts of the amplifier. And here it is. Now, first thing I noticed is with the black circuit board, and it looks like a one-sided circuit board. It reminds me a lot of the Boss amps. This is an AR4000 here, which is obviously quite a bit more beefy because it's about twice as powerful as this amp. But uh, it does remind me a lot of the boss and the way that the circuits are laid out and just the way that the board looks in general. Now, as far as components, we have 50 volt, 2200 microfarad rail capacitors. And then for input filtering, we have 25 volt, 2200 microfarad caps there. And as far as the power supply MOSFETs, 50N06, the N channel MOSFETs. And you can read more about what those are here. And I talked with Sam at BearVids. He says these are used in kind of lower powered amplifiers. And as far as the output transistors, the RF 540Ns, these are using amps up to 800 watts. Next up, we're going to talk about things I like and dislike about the amp. First off, the good stuff, the price, obviously unbeatable. Variable subsonic, variable phase, which are unheard of in an amp this cheap. RCA input and output, which is nice. Includes the bass remote. It does the rated power clipping for the most part. Two ohms is the only one that didn't do that, but it was so close, statistically the same. Could be better. Sound quality definitely could be better. Speaker control was not that great. I don't like the spade connections. The bass knob has an extremely cheap feel to it. It's hard to turn the potentiometer. Don't like that. And of course it has cheap components because it's a cheap amplifier. What do you expect, right? I have people send me amps like this all the time, asking me to test them to see, you know, maybe, hey, maybe we're finding a good amp here that's inexpensive. In my opinion, I would pass on this amplifier. I did not like the way it sounded with the subwoofer. It may have been hard to hear in the test, but it did not have good speaker control. It just didn't sound good on the bass, so I'm used to amplifier sounding much better. So I appreciate you guys watching, as always. Patreon.com slash Old School Stereo. Special thanks to Stuart. Travis, Jesus, Tomcat, Big D, I'm out of here! Alright, so you guys like to see when I do the low impedance testing, so I figured 
since this amp didn't, you know, impress me as far as the sound quality went, I was going to try some additional tests. So first up, point 0.8, we try the dynamic test. 710 watts at 14.74. So after the dynamic test doesn't put the amp into protect, I'll usually try some of the other tests. So let's try certified at point 0.8. And the thing I noticed is the amplifier did not count up cleanly, and it just didn't like that. So we stopped the test at about 425 watts. However, the uncertified test usually will work, but in a lot of cases it will blow the fuses because it pulls more current, but let's try that and see uncertified at 0 0.8 and 572 right at 14 volts. Wouldn't recommend running this amp under one ohm. I really just wouldn't recommend running this amp period because I don't think you're gonna like the sound quality. Uh, we also tried 0 0.67 dynamically. Again, this is just for fun. These are instantaneous tests with the pulse track. 773 watts though. Got to give it some love for that. Then I said, what the heck? 0. 0.5. Let's try 0. 0.5. And look at this. We're getting close to 1K, baby. 944 watts, 14.65. Then I was like, yeah, let me try to feed it a little bit more juice. So I turn up the voltage, 16 volts. And check this out. 1,000 plus watts. Like one, yeah, 1,076 here, right at 16 volts. So not too bad overall. And here's the final dyno sheet you can see. And I hope you guys will check out some of my other videos here that are listed as well. See some other tests with more things coming. Until next time, we will see you then. Big D, I'm out.